Hello everyone, this is Brian Beamish back with you again here, the Rational Investor. Um, and we're going to do a nice little technical analysis tutorial, a walkthrough of the uh, trading view charts that I like to use that you often see on these uh, front page uh, chart panel here. A lot, a lot of my um, school for Bitcoin trader development people, I encourage them to be using the trading view charts and you see them a lot in my daily videos. So I'm just going to show you here how I use them and uh, hopefully this will help you in understanding uh, how I do it. So uh, for the purposes of this tutorial we're going to start off by going to uh, the rationalinvestor.co uh, and I just want to check in and make sure that we're still doing everything all right here. Good. Um, and that should bring us to our home page. We're going to go over to, now I've already logged in so you got to log in, but we're going to go over to the crypto daily page and this is where you watch your videos. So, uh, oops, I beg your pardon. <laughs> well, this is the uh, blog. This is where we get the, I post all my daily uh, updates. Crypto Live is where we want to go to. Beg your pardon. Um, and here, uh, I have just embedded uh, daily BTC stamp and Phoenix chart here, just for your reference, and just in case you were wondering what those are. Um, and of course here's where you watch your full-length videos. Um, I've also added a couple really neat features that I use on a daily basis. The first is um, this crypto matrix <clears throat> and what's really cool is we can stay within uh, the Rational Investors uh, website the way we've done this so it's really cool. Uh, but basically this just gives you a nice broad picture of what's exactly going on in uh, in the Bitcoin and Litecoin markets here at any given point in time and uh, they're all here and you know the great part about these trading view applets is uh, they're all basically updated in real time so it's really cool. Uh, so we have 15 minute along the uh, right hand side working its way up in time one hour four hour and daily um, so you can get you know a nice quick snapshot. In fact, I just often leave this uh, um, leave this on the screen, you know, through the trading day, and you know, at a glance, I can see exactly what's going on uh, everywhere. You know, it's interesting to see the Litecoin uh, market here. Look, is looking like an interesting short on a fail of this level here. Right? And we just saw that just by pulling this page up. All right, isn't that interesting? Um, so that's a handy little tool. And like I said, uh, you get the, to that page just by clicking on the crypto market matrix. Uh, but the purpose of today's tutorial is really to talk about this. This is, uh, I clicked on this link, the blank chart template. And when you do that, again, staying within the rationalinvestor.co's uh, framework, and I think that's so cool, is you have this nice chart. Um, I guess you're not supposed to call them applets, you're supposed to call them widgets now, I think. But anyway, uh, from TradingView. And uh, the reason why I had to do it this specific size is uh, when we, you know, draw some of our studies, which we'll get to in a bit, um, the menus off of those studies, if you want to go and alter them, um, you'll notice that they have to be, the, the window has to be at least this size to be able to see the full menu. So that's why I did it that size. Uh, so my recommendation is um, just hit control minus sign, that's right beside the zero up top, uh, and I'll just zoom the screen out a little bit. And then that way you should be able to get the whole chart right on the page. Um, so, you know, the great part about embedding this chart here on this, uh, on the website is that we can now all just basically work straight off of the website if we're doing chart analysis. Um, and everybody has access to this now. There's nobody who can say they don't have access. Um, the website itself, tradingview.com, um, I would highly encourage you to head on over to the site and register. You know, I have, uh, this is me over on this site. I sort of have like a little home here. Uh, and if you follow me, you can go and look at all the posts that I've done over the years. Um, you know, published quite a few ideas. <clears throat> 
and uh, everything from bitcoins to uh, the stock market to options plays. Uh, you know, somebody asked me to look at Boeing recently, and it turns out I think that's a pretty good idea that we just uh, steer clear of buying any stock right for now. Um, but anyway, long and short of it here is uh, if you want to learn uh, more about uh, sort of my analysis, this is one great place to go and you can follow me there. And these guys have this widget that you can uh, plunk onto your web page and uh, basically run their charts right from your web page. So that's basically what this is. And I'm super pleased with this because it's totally awesome. Uh, so when you load this uh, page, right, this was from the Crypto Live page, just click on blank chart template. What loads here is the chart plus a whole bunch of quotes that I've just sort of embedded uh, in the code um, just because I think they're handy. So the first few uh, are BTC quotes. So there's BTCE, there's Stamp, uh, there's Phoenix. You know, we can always add or subtract over time. Probably a good idea to add China in there somewhere. Um, a couple Litecoin markets, here's BTCE Litecoin, here's Phoenix Litecoin, and then I also included the spread, uh, Litecoin Bitcoin spread on BTCE. And then I even tweeted, uh, you know, I saw this chart yesterday and I tweeted and I said, gee whiz, you know, a nice move through this level here, you know, back on the upside, and wow, this thing's got a long way to run. So anyway, so it's handy just to have these on here, just to peruse the charts. Um, you know, just because I am a stock market person and uh, I, you know, as of a few months ago, I was a prop crude oil trader, uh, I would it would be remiss for me not to include some broader benchmarks. So, you know, whenever we're studying the market, we should always start with whatever the current financial asset proxy is. And in the world history, you know, for now, it's still the U.S. dollar index, you know. Over time, it has been the British pound. It has been the uh, Spanish. Uh, I don't even know what the hell the name of it was. <laughs> but anyway, um, I do know that one uh, one eighth of one coin is called a bit, though, and I remember that analogy. I told that to somebody the other day, and they thought that was amusing. But anyway, so long and short of it here is that U.S. dollar index is really our financial asset proxy. So always a good idea to base your analysis off of that. Um, and then I have a couple of the popular crosses. So there's Euro, Euro U.S. dollars. There's Japanese U.S. dollar. Um, you know, a couple stall words. You really should always, you know, there's a gold uh, price for you here. Um, you know, with regard to our course material, I think this is really handy to have on here. I've included the Dow Jones gold uh, ratio. And everybody who's taken the course now knows exactly what I'm talking about. And what's really cool is uh, we can really zoom out on this chart and we can actually see the last uh, greed cycle peak. There it is, 40, uh, 40 times uh, um, 40 ounces of gold to buy one Dow Jones industrial unit. And then we came screaming all the way down here to what, five or six ounces of gold to buy one Dow Jones industrial unit. And and the this is since QE, right? Um, I guess well, I guess QE sort of started in here, and then it was really questioned whether it was working into here. Uh, this is what we've done since, you know. So it's really cool. Uh, this will be a handy tool for for that part of the class. And of course, here's my old oil. You know, I gotta have oil on the charts just to have an idea of what's going on there. And this is interesting, right? This is one reason you could argue that the uh, tech sector should do better. Falling oil prices. At least uh, ever all of us, uh, you know, looking at gas pump prices. Hopefully, we'll see them fall from here. Um, I like to keep an eye on the bonds. That's the TLT U.S. Treasury Bond Long Index. Um, this is an ETF. And here's another handy little tool that I've uh, developed over the years. This is the bond, uh, this is what I call my inflation gauge. And it basically just measures the spread between um, uh, the TLTs, which we just saw there. They were the government bonds and the TIPs. And the TIPs are the tips are the inflation in protected bonds. So they have a little inflation premium attached to the bond price. 
Um, and so the basic premise is if there is a lot of inflation or if there's a or perception that inflation is growing, then the tips will gain a premium over the TLTs. And then conversely, if it's believed that maybe we're in you know deflation uh, and there is no risk of inflation, then there won't be a uh, uh, you know a, a bid in that um, inflation premium. Uh, so you may see the tips trade to a discount to the TLTs. And so you can see, you know, over the financial asset crisis and all that, you can see how this relationship has played itself out. So it's a very handy little tool. Uh, to keep an eye on, um, and as you can see, you know we had inflation expectations top out uh, in fourth quarter last year, and the inflation expectations actually have been dropping. And we actually just about had a nice little bottom come in here, and I think the market was expecting for inflation to come in, and then we just got another kick in the shins. So, you know, we're we're flirting with dangerous levels here, right? You know, we're right at zero. So there's neither inflation nor deflation priced into the market. Uh, but if we start slipping into deflation, and that's basically the trend here. Uh, that's very bad for the economy, and you know that's when the QEs, uh, you know, the Fed starts squawking about QE and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then lastly, I've got just the major stock ETFs. So here's the Dow, here's the Nasdaq, here's the S and P's. I might add a few more symbols, but basically, this is I think is a nice handy little guide. I mean, I can think of one or two symbols just as we were going through this. I might add. Um, and you can get rid of this quote screen just by clicking on this little button here. Boom, gone. All right, so now you got a full screen to work with for charting. All right, so um, I always like to have a nice clean chart, so I just turned off that volume indicator. And, um, you know, for the purposes of this introduction, you know, let's put it back on BTC because I know all you love BTCE so much or BTC in general. Um, and let's put it back to daily. All right. So, you know, we'll just run through a few things here. Um, you'll notice that I move the chart around quite a bit, uh, back and forth. You can do that manually just by left-clicking on the chart and moving back and forth, and it automatically scales. Um, you can't move the chart verti uh, yeah, vertically, um, just on its own. You have to do a funny little trick, so just watch this. You have to go over to the price scale, you have to left click and you have to just adjust the price scale just a little bit and that sort of unlocks it. Once you've done that then you can go back over to the chart pane, left click and you can now move it around. So that's a handy little thing. It took me a while to figure that out. <clears throat> Now let's say uh, you know. Um, also, too, uh, if you take your mouse wheel and you wheel in and out, that's the same thing as doing the plus and the minus sign, zooming in and out on the chart. So let's say I just zoomed in. I'm like, okay, well now I'd look at the chart because I've already adjusted the price scale. I can just pick the chart up and center it, then go back over to the price scale, drag the price up so it fits what I'm looking for. See how that works? Now I'm like, oh geez, you know, I want to go back to that original view. All you have to do is go back down to the chart here, this uh, circle-y button in the middle, and just click, boom, and it goes right back to the original setting. Now because you've gone back to the original setting, you know, you can't pick the chart up and move it around. You got to, if you want to do that again, remember you have to go back over to this pane, left click, just move it just a little bit to unlock it, and then away you go. Okay, so when the chart loads, this is actually uh, blank over here, and so you saw that I did some drawing tools, and so what I did was I actually went to this button up here. There's a whole bunch of buttons up here that you should be comfortable with. Uh, so let's just sort of go through these. You know, by default, they have this one minute, 30 minute, one hour daily on there. Um, you know me, I'm, I'm a big fan of looking at the one hour, so we click on that. And really, you know, we can drill all the way down, like I said, to five minute, three minute. I don't have enough coins to make it profitable to trade, you know, really short term time frames here. 
uh, on Bitcoin, you know, considering commissions and all that, it just doesn't make sense. So I usually don't really go down any lower than the one hour. Uh, that doesn't mean you don't have to, but that's just the way I am. Um, I like to look at the four-hour chart as well. I think that's handy. And then for Bitcoin purposes, um, I also like to look at the one uh, one daily uh, chart, the daily chart. Yeah, that was tough to say. Um, you know, uh, we can't load my indicators off of this um, embedded chart, and that's a bit of a pain in the butt. Uh, we can load just some prefab indicators. You know, you can always, um, you know, take the MACD. I just clicked on it there. You see how it loaded up. It's preset to 1226. You can always just mouse over to this little format button. And you can change this to 9. If you want to, you can leave it at the default settings. You know, it's entirely up to you. But I just moved it to what I like to do. And then yeah, I click on style, and it actually gives me, you know, choices what I want to see. All I really want to see is the histogram, so we can take these off. And boom, there's my raw momentum reading. Um, and the great part about this and what we'll do through the course and what I'd like to see you guys do is, you know, experiment. Say, okay, well, there's, uh, there's Brian's MACD. I wonder what it looks like in comparison to just a regular MACD, you know, and you can see the subtleties. Not much difference in this data set. Oh, well, it's not much difference because it's the same numbers. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's see. We'll click to default. So that's, okay, there you go. All right, so now you can see the difference. <laughs> and you can take this uh, study off, leave it on. You know, long and short of it here is these are very, very flexible. Really like how it works that way. Um, so we can take these off just for the time being. Um, so that was that was an example of the momentum. Uh, like I said, Willie, you can't put Willie the study on it, but we can do something close. We're going to Williams percentage R, and the raw reading that I use is just simply changing the 14 to the 21. And we don't have the moving average, but you know you can see market structure. You know, obviously this was speaking volumes up here. I was speaking volumes, you know, got oversold here, oversold, 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 right? So that's nice and handy. And really that's what I use this for, right? It's just to show me when the market's overbought and oversold. Um, let's see. And then lastly, same sort of thing. The OBV itself is a custom indicator, uh, but you can put on the raw one. I mean, this is just basically the raw reading. Nice and simple. Um, I guess the next thing I'd like to talk about is just these drawing tools. So what I did was I just clicked on this button up here. So I don't I don't know what that's supposed to be, but anyway, um, the last button on the right hand side here, and it pulls up all this stuff. And so these are a lot of the tools. And so one of the tools that I love to use are Fibonacci retracements. So if you look at this, there's a whole bunch of fun toys in here, and if you want to spend lots of time learning about all this stuff, you know, feel free. Uh, there's a world of information in here. So here's Fibonacci retracements down here, so I'm going to click on that. And I'm just going to mouse uh, over where I want to start it. I'm going to left click, and I'm just going to drag it all the way to where I want to end it. And then left click again, and boom, there's the fibs. Now you should know, and I frankly don't know why TradingView does this, but you should know that you know these fibs are not exactly right. This 76.4 should be 78.6. Uh, that's an important one. You may have to go in and manually change that. Uh, most of these others are pretty germane, you know. Uh, so you know, I just eyeballed I eyeballed this, you know. Uh, you can go in and you know get the exact numbers just by clicking on, and you can move this uh, menu around if you wanted to. But you can just go in and get the exact numbers by clicking on settings. Here's this box. You know because this box is so big, that's why I had to make the chart this big it is because I didn't want the box not to be there. 
But anyway, uh, we go in, we uh, go into coordinates here, and you can just mouse over and see, oh yeah, the high there was uh, 668.42. So 668.42. And the low here was, uh, oh yeah, 340.51. 340.51. And boom, you now have your fibs to work with. You can go back over here over this uh, chili thing and select rectangle and just take this 61.8 down to the 78.6. This is what I do on almost all my charts. Boom, there's OTE. You can change this. You know, let's uh, change that to green. And let's uh, go into settings. And we'll make it a little more opaque. All right. So you've probably seen that a lot on my charts. Uh, and then let's not forget 38.2 first stop target. So that's right in this area. All right. We, in fact, you know what? I don't want these numbers on this side. Let's move them over to this side. There they are. All right. And, you know, everything starts to sort of make sense, right? Everything starts to sort of fill itself in. Uh, we could go back here and we can draw a trend line. In fact, you know what? I don't want to see the trend line off of this fib because that's, you know, that's just going to confuse my brain. So let's go get rid of that. Uh, where is that trend line? Turn that off. So that's gone now. And let's put a real trend line on there. So we'll go trend line. And then we'll just click here, and we'll go here, right? And you can even go and set the exact numbers. You know, so we'll click on this, and we'll go settings, coordinates. Remember we said this was 341, what was that number again? 34051, beg your pardon, 34051. And this number is 41139, or close there. And let's extend this out over time. So we'll go here, and we'll go uh, right end, extended. And voila, one trend line. <clears throat> Interesting here, eh? So nice. Uh, didn't really test that there, but wow, look at that battle right in there. And then let's do the same thing, and we'll do two here. We're going to take a trend line from this peak to this peak. So we'll just go left click, left click, all right? And then let's take a trend line from that peak to that low. There we go. And that's big. I mean, like I could go in and uh, you know get all these numbers exactly right, and I just showed you how off of this trend line you can do it. And that's basically uh, what we have here. You know? uh, this is you know, and I think that basically summarizes the market. So we had you know 38.2 right here, super battle level, not a big surprise. We could, if we wanted to be really cute, draw a nice little fib off of this low up to this high, right? Now, you see that the numbers are backwards, right, because I did this backwards. So to correct that, I'm going to go into Settings, and I'm going to click Reverse. So when I do that, now all the numbers are going up. And I'm going to go in. I don't need to see these extension numbers, but I'm going to go in, and I want to add 88.6, because remember, we thought that that was a bat formation, right? And so there's 88.6 right there. And sure enough, boom, right to it. Um, but you know what? I think I would like to see what some extension numbers are off of a fail of this range. So I've seen that. Let's go add another fib. Just get crazy. Down to here. All right. Where's our 100? Right to. <laughs> it's getting awfully busy. And then let's go settings, and then let's go change these. And we'll get rid of all this. 
And let's go 1.27. We got 1.61. Let's go 1.44. And let's go 200. All right, now this is interesting. So this range here, if it fails, and keep in mind I'm eyeballing these numbers. They're not exactly right. In fact, they're quite off. Uh, it would take me probably five minutes just to get all the numbers exactly right. But anyway, something around that area. So here's 127, here's 161, which happens to line up with 61.8, and here's 200, which happens to line up pretty close to the bottom uh, of this range. So 200% extension off of this would take us right into OTE here. So it's uh, there's an example of doing... Um, um, the OTE or range fibs, and then doing extend, and then we did also range fib going back up, um, and we I suppose we could draw our little drawings up in here. You know, there's our OTE short right up in there, and let's change this to red, right for the short zone. Nice and simple. Um, and, you know, if we break this level here, then odds are we go down into OTE, and that here's, you know, typical FIB levels, 127, 161.8. Uh, you'll get to know these uh, through uh, for students who are watching this uh, through those uh, weeks uh, coming up in the course. And here's 200 right down at the bottom of the OTE. So hopefully that's a nice good little tutorial on how to use uh, the site and uh, charts. Um, you know, you can always center it, and then if you want to save this picture, all you do is go up to the camera, and it spits up this thing. You can save the image. You can tweet it, um, and uh, take it from there. Right. I don't, actually, I don't know whether I can tweet this. Let's see what happens. Oh, yeah, there it is. Let's say simple, daily. I don't even know if you can see this or not. If you can't see this, you're probably saying, what the heck is Brian doing right now? Uh, it's a simple daily chart uh, with fibs. Yeah, hopefully that works. See what happens. All right, I don't know whether we tweet it or not. Let's go over to the regular website. And let's see what happened. Oh, I don't see anything. Usually it goes through very quickly. Uh, hmm. Here is the tweet. Did it tweet? Tweet, tweet, tweet. I don't know if it tweeted or not. But anyway, I'm sort of wasting your time here. I apologize. Doesn't look like it tweeted. So let's try again. Okay, simple daily chart with fibs. And we'll hit tweet. Waiting for Twitter. Oh, so it just said it tweeted. All right, and so you see here's a, an example of my Twitter feed, and you can see this on the website as well. Uh, you know, we should be here. Uh, are you going to update? It's interesting how some Twitter feeds update faster than others, even though they're exactly the same. Uh, let's see what we have here. There we are. So uh, you can see on the Twitter feed, you know, there's an example. We can go to my Twitter feed and actually see it. Uh, there it is. And we just clicked on this, and there's the chart. Just nice and simple. 
All right, so hopefully that's a, a good little tutorial to give you a heads up um, on using uh, the embedded chart uh, function that I ha we have on the um, on the website here, and hopefully that helps you out in uh, using this uh, to its full benefit. Um, there is one more button here that's open chart and pop up. I don't think I've talked about that where you can uh, actually open up. Uh, uh, where are we here? Well, you can open up this chart in a new window all on its own and maximize it. But I don't know whether I can show that in the Google Hangouts. I don't think it'll show it. So, but anyway, um, you know, lots of fun, lots of different things to do, lots of different things to explore. Um, and, uh, you know, get back to me with feedback um, and let me know if you have any questions and I'll try and make this video even better. So, have yourselves a great day, and I hope that helps, and all the best, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.